Hi guys, today I'm gonna show you how I edit. Uh, yesterday I did a, a shoot, a video shoot for a client, and now I'm gonna do the whole project from the uh, whole edit from beginning to the end and showing you all the steps in between. I did a video similar to this in which I just showed the editing process as a time lapse, time lapse quickly, and I got a lot of questions: how can I edit that fast? So now I'm gonna show you. Uh, a time lapse, and then I'm gonna show you the, all the steps that I do uh, in the editing process as I'm editing, so that you can do it as well. Okay, let's start. So the first thing that I do, I build this kind of a folder structure. So materials, projects and done. And in the materials folder, I have a, a, for each camera, I have a folder. And then uh, if I have a lot of audio files, I might have another folder for them. But now in this case, we only have one audio file for, from an external recorder. And then I have a proxies folder, which is empty currently, but we're going to fill it soon. And I'll be working in Premiere Pro. So let's start by creating a project and I'm going to put this uh, project into the project folder, of course. And these I'm going to just leave uh, as, as they are for now. And okay. And my Premiere Pro interface is very simple. I have stripped it down to a minimum. Now I'll just import the material uh, into the project. Okay, now it's imported. And the first thing to note that whenever you're and doing editing like this, uh, you have periods when you just have to wait, and then it's good to do something else than just sit around or watch YouTube. Okay, so then the next step that we're going to do is to create proxies. As I showed you, uh, showed you the proxy for folder, proxies are these kind of replacement files that are easier for the computer to process. For example, this is uh, this footage is from the uh, GH5, and it's a 10-bit codec, and it's a bit heavy for the computer. So I'm going to create proxy files for to speed up the editing. And to do that, I'll simply choose all the clips, pressing down Shift and clicking the first and the last, then pressing down Command or Control and deselecting this folder, then right-clicking and going to Proxy and Create Proxies. And from here, I'm going to use a uh, uh, ProRes uh, full full HD um, and then I'm going to go and choose the proxy folder that we created uh, in the project uh, material folder so here proxies and select folder and okay and now it's going to take some time to do the proxying uh, the media encoder in Adobe Premiere Pro is rather slow uh, but it's uh, the colors are accurate so the proxies will have the same colors as the original ones so that's really good but if you're in a time pinch and you want to do this proxying uh, faster uh, there's another software that I like to use which is this uh, edit ready uh, edit ready is um, like almost like four times faster on my computer maybe not, it's not that fast on your computer this is much faster for creating proxies, so if you're in a, a hurry, use this. But the colors have a bit of a shift, so it is now with if you do the proxies with this software, you cannot really use them for color correction. But anyway, I'm not in a, a hurry, so I'm gonna do them with the media encoder, just that you know. Okay, so now do something else than just sit around. Okay, so instead of just waiting for the proxies to do, be done, I decided to go and do some exercising. And this is very important for you to do as well as an editor. Don't just sit around, just do some exercising, because otherwise your body will just decay. And one thing that I want to say about exercising is that it needs to be fun, because otherwise you won't do it again. <laughs> okay. We're back, and apparently the proxying is done, and now we are in uh, Premiere Pro, back in Premiere Pro, and all the files, all these uh, clips have a proxy file uh, attached to them. By the way, I like to click, right-click here on this bar and go to Metadata Display, and have a custom uh, kind of display setting, simple, and this will just show me the information that I'm actually interested of. Here you can see that all the files have a, a proxy attached to them. Okay, so next we're gonna start assembling the edit. And uh, a nice trick to getting, and by the way, if you're interested of the nature sounds, 
I'm listening to, I often like to listen to some nature sounds when I'm doing editing. This is a listening earth from SoundCloud. They have really good recordings of nature. Anyway, uh, so first trick that I'm going to share with you, how to get all these clips to the timeline, to a correct timeline in a consecutive order. So the first clip first and the last one last. So you do this, you click, you choose the first clip, first uh, track, first file, then you uh, try, uh, press down shift and you uh, choose the last one. And then you go back all the way up and deselect by command, by pressing down command or control, deselect the folder. You go all the way back and you uh, click the first one, you track it to the new icon, to this icon here. And now it will create a timeline where you have, and by the way, the order of clicking is very important. Um, now you have a timeline <coughs> where all the clips are in uh, like, in timely order. So first one, first clip is first and the last clip is last. And now if I press this uh, proxy uh, icon on, you can see how smooth is the playback here. <coughs> and if you don't see this icon, you can go to the plus and you can find it here. So, um, so this is the edit and some of these clips I shot in, uh, in full HD because these are slow motion. I shot them with a the GH5. So I'm going to choose all of these clips and right click them and press scale to frame size. And now all the uh, clips are scaled to the 4K uh, timeline that I'm working with. Okay, so next we'll start uh, kind of deciding what are our end deliverables. So I'm going to call this uh, timeline sorting. And then I'm going to create by dragging this to this new icon, I'm going to create a couple new, um, uh, what are these, timelines. Okay, so this I'm going to call uh, social media edit, because that's one of the videos that they, the client wants, an edit for social media. And this is going to be archive, original, and this is going to be archive uh, graded. So this is going to be uh, for for social media purposes so it's a, a quick edit and these are just archiving uh, the footage so original and then graded okay so for the summer edit uh social media social media edit i have an interview clips here somewhere uh, let me check here this interview so i'm gonna uh, copy that or cut it and go to the social media edit and put it here because this is going to be the base of the social media edit and then I'm going to add this external uh, sound. And now I'm going to go to the window, extensions and pluralize. This is a pl plugin that uh, allows me to synchronize the audio uh, between the tracks easily. I could, in this case, because it's uh, just two clips, I could do it manually, but well, if I can use this software, why not? Okay, it's done. And I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to go back to the original one original sequence and paste it here and then just gonna trim it down and then I can start editing and I'll for this I'm actually going to first uh, go through this interview and cut all the kind of slack away so getting a nice uh, uh, slim or trimmed down uh, edit of the interview so I'm just gonna do that and before I start I'll just show you a couple of things that I like to do uh, when I'm editing. Uh, for, for me it's very important to minimize the movement that I do with my mouse and use as much of the keyboard as possible. So on the keyboard, as, I, as I'm, uh, I'm using the mouse to scroll the, uh, through the footage, but when I'm, and by the way, I'm looking at the waveform here, so this one, this green waveform, because this is where I see when she's uh, speaking, because uh, she has a microphone here somewhere, and whenever she's speaking, the waveform goes up on the on this waveform. So here I'll just scroll uh, to this spot where she's starting to speak, and then I press Shift S, and I have set Shift S to be a shortcut uh, here to add edit uh, to all tracks. So uh, adding edit, so cutting the clip is just S, and adding uh, edit to all tracks is uh, uh, C shift s and by this i can easily edit and then another key co keyboard uh, shortcut that i have set is uh, delete at d if i press d it will delete the clips 
and then I'm going to comment it. Another uh, rather handy keyboard shortcut is uh, Command D, and it will ripple delete, uh, ripple delete this. So again, in the keyboard shortcut, if I write here ripple, you can see ripple delete is a Command D, and normal delete is just D. And then this view and Q are important as well. So all these are here on my keyboard. They are very close to each other. Here's here's S, here's D, Q, uh, W, and all these are very close to each other. So I don't have to move my move my hand much. So um, the way I use this, so I just go to the end where she's talking, and then I press Command S to add a cut. Then I'm just um, listening what she's saying. And then when I'm here, now I'm going to press Q and you can say it's a stream cut. It's kind of cut and uh, brought the kind of clips together. And by this, I can very quickly using this Q, uh, Q W and S and W, S and D and Command D, these uh, shortcut keyboards, I can really quickly edit uh, and trim down the uh, video on the timeline. I'm not actually using the source panel at all. So I'm not setting in points and out points. I'm doing all in the timeline. Okay, so I'm gonna do this now. So let's start. Okay, now the interview is being cut. And next I'm gonna go uh, to the kind of the rest of the clips that I shot. And now I'm gonna go through these clips and choose the good ones. So I'm gonna kind of, instead of trying to edit this, I'm gonna kind of cut down all the slack and just leave the good ones. And as I said again, I'm not using the source panel. I'm just doing everything in the timeline. So here I'm, I'm scrubbing through and whenever I see something that looks good, for example, this clip here, I just press, uh, in this case, S, play forward a bit, maybe press L to double speed. And then whenever the clip is done, there, about there, I'm gonna press S again. And in the sequence menu, I'm gonna select the selection follows playhead. And now whenever I move this uh, uh, playhead, you can see that uh, whenever the, the whatever clip is select, uh, underneath the playhead is selected. And then by pressing down Alt and uh, up arrow, I can move this clip to a second track. And by this, uh, I can quickly, by uh, using the S and the Alt uh, up arrow, I can easily go through and select the good clips from uh, these uh, from this footage. And I'm just going to do that next. And by the way, I forgot to mention that I'm using uh, the scroll wheel on my mouse. And whenever I press uh, Alt and I scroll up, it will zoom up. And when I zo uh, scroll down, it will zoom in. And if I press Command, it will go back and for, uh, forward in the timeline. So I'm using these all the time. And um, you cannot really see it because my hands are uh, below the frame, but my hands are not moving that much when I'm editing. Okay, now I have uh, lifted all the good tracks on the second uh, good clips on the second track. And now I'm going to select all the not good clips, just uh, just cut them and paste them here in the end of the time, uh, sequence. Then I'm going to nest them and I'm going to give this a sequence, new sequence co a name called the rest. And uh, this is because now I still have all the footage here. And if I suddenly remember that, hey, this was this one footage where the dog was licking someone's thumb or something, I can easily go back here and uh, get it because I remember uh, have a kind of like a mental map on where it was on this timeline. Anyway, so let's clean this up a bit. Sorting, okay, and then I can delete it from this sh sorting style sequence. And now I have this kind of a sparse timeline and go to sequence and close gap. And then I'm gonna delete, I'm gonna put it to the beginning and just let's put it on the first track. And now we actually have out of the three videos that I mentioned in the beginning, we have one, the archive original now done. So I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna put it here, archive original. So that's done. And next we're gonna go archive graded 
and I'm gonna color grade all these clips. And uh, for color cor color correcting or color grading, I have a uh, a new method that I'm start I have started to use, and that is that I'm um, I have another project. Let me open it. Uh, uh, GH5 look gallery project. This is for GH5 currently. Maybe in the future I can do it for other cameras as well and maybe you can have this uh, project as well. Uh, this is in the color correction kit for the GH5 by the way. And here I have different um, kind of ready-made looks that I have built with adjustment layers. So for example I'm going to use this one. So I'm going to copy um, these two. This this layer is a grain layer and this is a color management layer. So I'm going to I'm going to take all of them but not the grain layer. I'm not going to add grain to this these clips. I'm just going to copy these adjustment layers and then I'm going to go to the archive graded and I'm going to highlight or like activate the second track and deselect it activate the first track and now when I paste the adjustment layers will appear here. Uh, starting from the second video track, so they will not go. They will not go on top of any clips. And I'm just gonna spread them out to the length of the clips. And you can see the colors look awful because this is was not actually GH5. This was a Mavic Pro. So I have to go here in the clip, uh, in the individual clip, and the lumetri color. And then I'm gonna just che uh, check this uh, Mavic Pro D log to V log uh, profile. And this will change the D log in the V log, and now it will behave pretty much the same way as the V log would have behaved if it would have been there in the sky. And then I'm just gonna copy this same effect to these two drone clips as well. So here we have the uh, footage uh, in V log and color corrected to V log. And I'm just gonna turn this all layer off because it's not necessary right now. Let's put it up a bit so we don't need it. This is a layer that will allow me to see how the colors will look after exporting because my uh, computer and my monitor uses the DCI-P3 color space and when I export it's going to be exported to us RGB. Ah, I'm going to make a video about color management in, in the future. Anyway, so now, and actually one thing more, uh, some of these clips were shot in uh, were not shot in vlog, but they were shot in Cine D. So let's try and find some of those clips. Or like here, this one. Here you can see the colors are all over the place. So it's uh, this is not shot in vlog. So let's go here and turn this. This is was Cine D. So let's turn it to vlog, and it works much better. And uh, and here the same thing. So let let me go through these clips. And then I'm going to turn all the D-Log clips into V-Log. And, and if I have this video track 1 activated, whenever I press up and down arrows, you can see that it's moving the uh, playhead according to, well, activating the clip that is under the playhead. So then I can easily go and see which uh, clips are seen D and turn them to V-Log. Okay, now everything seems to be vlog. <coughs> and by the way, even though I'm working on a laptop, this is very smooth and it's very responsive because I'm working with the proxy files. As you can see here, looking at this clip, the proxies are kind of, I'm working actually with the proxies, not the original uh, files. And that's why this is so responsive. Okay, and now <coughs> I can start doing the color correcting because now everything is vlog. But first, I want to kind of set the whole tone for the uh, whole video, uh, for, for every clip. And I can do them by using these uh, uh, adjustment layers. For example, this layer, HDR layer, is a layer that uh, gives this a, a strong uh, kind of exposure blending effect. And I don't want it to be that strong. So I'm going to go here in the adjustment layer and in opacity and just bring it down. Let's think maybe... Maybe 50 would be quite nice. Let's check on other clips as well. Looks quite good. And by the way, <clears throat> I see a bit of grain in some of these uh, clips. Uh, it's better uh, that might be caused because in the sequence settings, I don't have this maximum bit depth uh, enabled. So that will give me less grain if I have this uh, enabled because I'm doing a lot of, yeah, 
the grain is now gone because I'm doing quite a lot of uh, color correcting so I'm pushing and pulling the footage uh, quite a lot so that's why it ends up if I don't have the maximum bit depth up activated it will give me grain okay and then let's check this uh, look I'm using a film emulation lookup table from the color correction kit and I don't think this in this case it's not it doesn't su uh, suit the, it doesn't su suit it should it doesn't fit quite well the project so I'm gonna lower it down quite a lot so maybe like the 30 there about and then I think this is quite good maybe I could lower the contrast a bit so in on this layer I have this curves adjustment layer on a soft light blending mode so this is how it looks normally but when I put it to soft light it looks much better so here I could maybe lower down the contrast just a bit because it's quite contrasty mm, that's quite good and now I have done the adjustments for the kind of for the whole project and now I can go clip by clip doing adjustments to uh, each clip uh, individually so individual adjustments not affecting everything just individual ones and when I'm doing it like this that I'm I'm working in scene uh, vlog and because vlog is a standard standardized color profile and I have add, made these lookup tables that are uh, really accurate so the base 1s for example which is inside the color correction kit is very accurate for vlog um, I don't when I'm doing color color correcting I actually don't need in most cases need to use I only use these three sliders the top the white balance okay now the frogs are starting to sound a bit too much I'm gonna turn off the natural sounds better uh, so because I'm working in vlog and it's standard standard color space I can use mostly these three uh, sliders white balance and exposure just like I would go back in time to when I'm shooting and changing the uh, white balance and exposure on camera because now that we are working in vlog these uh, color uh, these adjustment lay uh, these uh, white balance sliders work really well and the exposure is rather similar to the actual exposure on camera so now I'm just going to go through these clips and kind of fix the white balance and add a bit of exposure and based on my eyes. I'm not using scopes because this is a, for this project I can, I can get away with that. And by the way, I want to show you that uh, when I'm doing this color, corre color, color correction, I'm using the up and down arrows to, uh, to go to the next and to the next and the next clip or the previous and previous and then if I want to check one individual clip I can press down shift and press forward and it will go it will skip like five or ten frames and then I can easily go through the clip and check that the color correction matches the whole clip from the beginning to the end so just that you know that it's quite easy and again my hands are not moving that much Here's an interesting phenomenon that I want to share with you. For some reason in Finland or people with Caucasian skin, when it's a bit colder, men t uh, tend to turn purple. Uh, it's not so visible in real life, though it, is, it, it, it does happen in real life as well, but it's very visible sometimes on video footage that some, some Finnish men just turn ter purple when it's cold. So let me show you how to fix this. And because we're using these adjustment layers, everything that we do on this on this actual clip happens before the VLOG conversion. And for that reason, for example, the HSL secondaries works now rather nicely. So I can just go here and choose uh, his skin tone, just painting and checking all the uh, uh, tones, then clicking here to see it. And yeah, that's good. And let's add some blur to blur the uh, edge a bit, something like that. And now when I'm using these sliders, these temperature and tint sliders, because we are doing it before the VLOG conversion, VLOG to Rec. 709, they work rather well. So now I can go and take a bit of the magenta away and add a bit of warmth and then maybe take a bit of saturation away from the skin as well. So something like that. And now, before and after. Purple fellow, a normal fellow. Okay, that's just a trick to do if you have purple men in your videos.
Okay, now the color correction is done for the archivable clips and now I can start doing the actual edit for the uh, social media video. And, uh, and now I'm just going to copy all these clips that we just color corrected. I'm just copy them and go to the social media edit and paste them here. And now it looks like that we are back in the square one because they don't have the color correction on them. But actually all of these clips have the individual uh, modifications that we did to them. So now when I, if I bring back these layers to the, this, this, uh, uh, this one, I can just, it will be just the same color correction as uh, we had in the uh, in the previous sequence but now because i'm i'm not having these adjustment layers the uh, playback is again very smooth because there's no color correction being done other than these small adjustments here to these clips so this is a nice way of kind of doing color correcting and then going back to editing without uh, losing the scroll scroll abilities scroll up scr the ability to sc scrub through the footage Okay, so next I'm gonna assemble the edit. So I'm just gonna uh, pick some B-roll footage for the interview and yeah, let's go. And then by the way, when I'm doing this edit, there's a couple of uh, key, uh, short keys, uh, keystrokes that I want you to know. The first one is command. If I uh, choose this clip and I start moving it around and press command down, it will bring these arrows and now I can put it like here and it will make space for the clip. So instead of putting it on top of the uh, previous clip, it will now give a kind of push space. So that's quite easy, a good way of doing it. And then sometimes if I want to copy something to use the same clip again, I can press down Alt and then bring it. So then it will copy the clip. So that's an easy way of copying. Okay, now I have as assembled the actual social media edit, and this is a very simple edit. There's no music and there's, there's no uh, lower thirds. It's very uh, quick and easy. And uh, I will now do the color correction, color color correction for it. And I'm going to use these adjustment layers again, just cutting a nice uh, piece of them. And let's move them to the. Let's give us a bit more space here. Let's move them here. And now all the clips uh, have already been color corrected because we color corrected in the previous step, except these uh, ones where she's talking. And uh, well, that's quite easy. You just go to the master settings of this clip because it was just one take. And then let's see what, what does it look like. It's, I don't know, maybe a bit, bit more exposure. Let's add it just a bit more exposure. Something like that. I guess that's good. Yeah, this looks good. Okay, and now the whole uh, color correction has been done. And I'll cut the adjustment layers here and remove the rest of the adjustment layer. And because now that we have all this junk in our backyard, I'm just going to leave it there. But uh, to prevent it from end ending up in our end res end re uh, export uh, in the end video, I'm going to go to the end of this uh, actual video and then to the last actual frame and then press O and it will set this out point. Uh, so now we have this gray area, which is the working area. And when we export, it will only export this working area and leave this backyard alone. So now this is quite done. But instead of uh, exporting it, I'm going to uh, export. I'm going to do previews uh, into ProRes. And because then I can kind of preview the view video and still do some edits if I think some clips maybe don't match in, uh, when it comes to color correction or some other reason. And then when I'm done, I can use those same preview files for faster exporting. So I'm just gonna let it uh, create the previews, check it out, and then render it uh, out. Instead of rendering it out and then noticing there's some uh, mistakes in the uh, edit and then have to render the whole thing again. With this, I can just render the preview files check for issues and then uh, only render again the preview files for the individual clips that I did some editing on or did some fixing mis mistakes or something anyway and then I can use the previews to faster exporting you'll see in a sec another health tip is to drink water while you're doing this 
and another one is to actually stand up. I have actually a stand up, um, standing st desk set up for this same space. I prefer using that because if you sit down all day, it's actually more unhealthy than uh, smoking a pack of cigarettes every day. Just that you know. Okay, there's a couple of things. Uh, this clip has a bit of a jitter, chatter, jitter, jitter. So I'm gonna add a warp stabilizer on it. And then I think this was a bit too warm, so I'm gonna cool it down just a bit. Uh, hi, this is Jonas from the future, and I wanted to add something to the tutorial that I totally forgot because I was rushing the whole production of this the tutorial. And that is color, color matching your clips. So making sure that the clips work together. And here in Premiere I have the same sequence opened. And uh, here, this button, you can find it from here, from the plus menu. Just click this and then you see two of these um, clips uh, next to each other. And this left one, you can choose a reference. For example, let's choose this one. So I'll copy the time, uh, time code and paste it here. So then now this will be the, our kind of hero shot. And now I just go through each clip in the sequence to make sure that they kind of go well together. So they match and they look that they're from the same video. Because if you just do it, um, if you color correct uh, uh, clips individually, it kind of does the tone and the, all the look will uh, shift from the beginning to the end because it's just using one frame to do the color correction. But now I'm kind of matching them together to make sure that the clips work together. And in the video that I did, there was actually this shift. And that's why I needed to come and kind of show you that I forgot one crucial part. Okay, let's continue. And then before I'm ready to export, I'm gonna do very, very simple sound design. So first of all, uh, these interview clips, I'm gonna give them just a bit more headroom, like this. And then I'm gonna add a simple fade in and fade out to each of these uh, uh, edits so that they are not so uh, erupt. And then I'm gonna, uh, these, all these B-roll clips uh, have audio with them. So I'm gonna unmute the track, but some of these clips are very high uh, volume. So I'm gonna go to the audio track mixer and choose, this is the audio track one. I'm gonna bring the down, sound down from these B-roll clips quite a lot. And then I can listen to them by just checking them out. <coughs> by the way, I was, I was afraid that my Premiere just crashed, uh, so but it didn't. But sometimes it does crash. I recommend going to Preferences and in Auto Save, uh, choose this automatic save uh, every five. Or like it's normally default is 50 minutes, but I recommend putting it on five minutes. So whenever this pro program crashes, it's a maximum of five minutes that you lose your lost your work because then you can go back to the previous auto save and that's on the maximum five minutes ago. Okay, so now I'm gonna render the previous and then I'm gonna render this uh, these three videos out and I'm gonna uh, send them to, to the client and now this edit is done. Okay, I don't know how long it took me, a bit longer now that I'm teaching you guys, uh, just showing you all the steps. Uh, normally I can do this in, in about one hour or so, now it was a bit more, maybe even two hours although I had uh, quite a lot of material. But anyway, excuses, excuses. Um, so this is my workflow and I would like to see, like I, um, I would be interested of you telling me what is your workflow and if you see anything that you could, I could improve on my workflow, so maybe speeding it up or just any uh, kind of uh, alternative ways of doing stuff. So please comment in the comments below and uh, yeah, see you in the next video.